Let's welcome our next guest. We love talking about food here at Build Brunch, and there's no one better to join the table than our next guest. In her show, Beach Bites with Katie Lee on the Cooking Channel, Katie travels around the shore tasting the best local food these areas have to offer. Let's take a look. There's nothing better than a day spent at the beach, especially with all the yummy food I get to sink my teeth into. Oh, yeah. Join me as I cross sand and surf in search of the best beach food with a view to match. Mm. This is Beach Bites on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. Everybody, please put your hands together for Katie Lee. <laughs> Summer vibes to the table. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Had a little Beautiful. floral going. Yes. Yeah. So your show is like my dream job. You basically get to <laughs> travel to all these different beach towns and eat food. Yeah, it's um, my dream job too. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not a bad gig. What has been like your favorite city or what region or what you know, beach specifically just really brings it. Well, you know, there have been some great surprises, places that I'd never been before and never really thought about going on vacation. Like, I never thought of Mississippi as a beach destination. Yeah. And we went down there, had such a good time, big, beautiful beaches there, and great food. Um, this week, I'm going to Tybee Island, Georgia, is the episode. Mm -hmm. I'd been to Savannah probably half a dozen times, never driven 20 minutes further to go to this island. And it was just so special and beautiful. And there's so many great places to see and so much good food to be eaten. In Mississippi, what did you eat there that was really good? Oh, um, what didn't I eat there that was really good? We went to a place called Nana Jay's um, that was a soul food restaurant, and they made these fried pork chops smothered in gravy mm -hmm. that were mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. Smothered. Oh, my God. And, yum, yum. and then went to a place called Mary Mahoney's that's really well known there for seafood gumbo. And, you know, being on the Gulf Coast, they get fresh shrimp, which, you know, most of the time, and many places in America, you're not getting fresh shrimp. It's always frozen. So to go to the Gulf and have that shrimp that comes right out of the water, it tastes so different. Oh, so good. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And why uh, beach food and like going to beaches? Have you mm -hmm. always just been like a beachy girl? Like <laughs> yeah, you know, I grew up in West Virginia and we would go every summer to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and that was what we saved our money for all year. It was what my grandpa talked about all year. We couldn't wait to get down to the beach and have fried oysters. <laughs> oh, and so, so yeah, I, I'm I just, getting so hungry right <laughs> yeah. now. I'm like, I can't think about anything but food. <laughs> yeah, I grew up just thinking it was the that was the most special time of the year was to go to the beach and I love being near the ocean so I went in and pitched this show to Cooking Channel and I thought that they would laugh at me like mm -hmm. okay you want us to send you around to beaches so you can have one big long vacation yeah. and they said yes. Oh, that okay. sounds can you ever go to a beach and just relax you're always like oh god what cool thing could I cook right now. <laughs> no I think I'm pretty well relaxed. <laughs> Feet are in the sand you got no cares yeah. in the world. Oh, oh my god it's the best. Yeah it really is. Do you Whatever. ever worry like I look at the theme of this show and I'm like, I don't want to put on a bathing suit. And oh, I do think about that. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I always tell the crew, if we need a bathing suit shot, it has to be first thing in the morning. Right. I'm totally. not spending the whole day eating and then getting in a bathing suit yeah. and yeah. feeling bloated. That was the first thing I thought. I was like, she must be the bravest woman in the world. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I get up in the morning, I do my workout, and then if there's going to be a shot walking on the beach, it's happening first thing. Yeah, <laughs> oh that makes God. sense. Yeah, we'll not be indulging all day and then putting on a bikini. Yeah, that sounds like a lot. Not a good mix. <laughs> so you also have a pretty cool show on the Food Network called mm -hmm. Katie Lee Eats Meat, which is the best title ever, yeah. uh, in sweats. And in two sweats. of our favorite things here at Build Brunch. So let's take a look at that clip. I'm Katie Lee, and I eat meat in sweats. It's like nature's meat on a stick. It's like childhood in a bite. It's got everything in one pan. Hey, a party. What do you think, Gus? Perfect. I just think that food tastes better when you're comfortable. I think I need to steal just a little bite. I think it's one of the reasons I like to stay home and cook so that I can wear sweatpants. Today, I'm making a classic. Meatloaf, skirt, steak, fajitas, pimento cheeseburgers. You're gonna have some meat sweat, so you better jump in the pool afterwards. Very generously seasoned. Whisking that all together out all the liquid. Oh, look at that flame. Be sure to come back every week and watch more Katie Lee Eats Meat and Sweats. Don't forget to put on your sweatpants.
my mouth water. <laughs> I basically just want to wear sweatpants everywhere. Sure. I'm always looking You're for like, an send excuse. Send me on vacation. To yeah. 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 Sweat. Yeah. You're the yeah. smartest woman in show business. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. how can I come up yeah. with where I can just be comfortable? Oh, yeah, I'm that. always That's looking so for an excuse. I mean, even this jumpsuit has an elastic waistband. Yeah. So smart. Yeah. Where do you find your sweats? Because I feel like you know you have like a, a nice like bunch of different types of sweats. You're not just I'm, like I'm always sweatpants. on the lookout for good sweatpants. I found Bloomingdale's has a lot of good sweats. They have a great selection, um, and I'm always looking online for sweats. I, you know, I'm I'm specific in the sweats, and they need to be really comfortable. Like, do you ever put on a pair of sweats and they actually feel a little tight? Yeah, yeah, and that happens like, to me all the time. Why would I so wear sad. these? Yeah. So, like yeah. with a slim cut leg? No, oh, thank you. Don't want to be no. sad. Yeah, I wear like men sweats. Yes. Like they're never too tight. I just like they feel want to so swim good. In. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and after you've had those on, how can you go back to tight jeans after that? Yeah. I know yeah. eating meat in yeah. jeans. I don't no, think so. No, not fun. Doesn't sound as fun at all. When I first looked at the title of this show, me and my friends, when we eat too much meat, we call it getting the meat sweat. Yes, that's so a, it was like a double. Was yeah. 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 So are you a big meat eater? Um, you know, I love meat, but I do look at it as a treat. I don't think that it's something that you should have every meal. Mm. Um, to me, I eat a lot of vegetables and fruits, and I, I do like healthy food, thank goodness. Um, so I look at meat as maybe a one time uh, a day or once every couple of days. It's not something that I have every meal. And when I do have it, I really enjoy mm -hmm. it, and I want it to be really good and the mm -hmm. best quality that I can find. Mm -hmm. And your family, you grew up growing your own vegetables, right? Your family we had did. their own garden? That's yeah, so cool. yeah. So um, my mom and I lived in the same neighborhood as my grandparents, mm -hmm. and my grandfather had this tremendous garden, and we were always eating whatever was coming out of it. And I think that that's why I like vegetables so much, yeah. because yeah. that's how we grew up. I love that. I bet they taste so much better knowing that you guys grew them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think that that's where comfort food starts is knowing where your food came from, how it was raised, totally. how it got to your plate. You know, it just makes it makes it that much more comforting. Yeah, absolutely. So you are on the cooking uh, channel, Food Network. Mm -hmm. I One of the places I see you all the time is as a guest judge on Beat Bobby Flay. <laughs> yes, which yes. Which I'm always watching. Um, my question about when you're on that show mm -hmm is when we have like the two co uh, competing chefs come out before they go up against Bobby and you guys like debate whether or not okay. you should pick someone. Is it just like you guys obviously know who you're gonna pick? Like, okay, Rachel's dish is way better. <laughs> or are you both like, no, I really think. Sometimes we really have to talk it out. You know, there are times where it's obvious who the winner is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, somebody, it, it, having that clock of 20 minutes, it can get to the best chefs and, and make them have you know, something that they really mess up on. But sometimes it's so close and you have to think, okay, both of these are really good, but who could beat Bobby? Who mm -hmm. has that, that could play on his weakness? So we'll look for that as well. Who maybe is a little bit calmer in the competition? You know, are they gonna be able to calm their nerves to beat Bobby? Wow, and that's it's really crazy hard that you to really beat look Bobby. At that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we do. We really think about it because as much as I love him, I love to see him get beat. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the fun part. He's just too good. Yeah. He don't you want good. to then like because you don't judge the second round, don't you want to taste Yes. The food in the second I'm round. I'm always like mad that I can't like... have the second round. And Bobby's good about it. He knows if I'm there that I want to eat. So he always makes me a little side plate. OK, yeah. Yeah, and I, I was go hoping and that I have a I little plate. You just made Allie's life. Yeah. Like, Why don't they get yeah. to eat? No, because yeah. I watch it all the time. And you guys try the first round, and you're rooting for this person the whole way through. Mm -hmm. And then you don't get to try it. As soon as the camera's cut, I go right up to Bobby's table, and I say, oh, what do you got for me? I can Bring it on. It. No, yeah. I love I got to have a bite. Most of the time, though, the person who's the competitor, they haven't made enough for the judges to have it They're as well. Stressed. Yeah, they're stressed, so that's all right. They get a pass, but Bobby, he's got to he's got to feed me. <laughs> <laughs> so I always um, we hang out together a lot, and he knows that I like mass quantities, and I usually bring my own yes. Tupperware to his house so that I can bring leftovers. Yeah, home. and you guys are pretty good buddies, and I know like your book Endless Summer. Mm -hmm. He said that the recipes were mouthwatering, and he like gave rave reviews, which was so nice. Which is so to have sweet. A good review from Bobby. Flay. Yeah, yeah, that's so awesome. For, so for us, what do you think is the most mouthwatering recipe, or what should we mm. kind of tackle first? In well, that you book? know, for summertime, I love tacos. You know, I think it's one love. of those things that oh, you yeah. can kind of. Um, do so many different takes. If you've got steak, you can make a steak taco or fish, or you can do veggie and you can make different kinds of salsas. Like, 
In the book, I have a few different recipes for salsas, like a peach cucumber salsa, mm. or you can do a nectarine salsa. You know, so start playing with those stone fruits and turning them into salsas where you would normally have tomatoes. And you get like those great sweet flavors that pair with a smoky meat mm. or you know, a piece of blackened fish. You know, it's really good to have mm. those with it. Yeah. Do you like, a, I had a kind bar for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> are, there, are there recipes for someone who can barely toast a piece of bread? Like, could I figure stuff yes, out? Yes, there are some really easy ones in there. Like, one of my favorites is um, a, a grilled donut. So you take oh day-old cinnamon me. sugar donuts and you put them in the panini press, and then you melt a little Nutella in the microwave and yeah. swirl that over. Oh. So if you're having friends over for brunch, yeah. make those. Get a bowl of berries and wow, mimosas I, I and you're done. It. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah. not going to the beach after that one, though. No, no. Do you have we a favorite can. brunch spot here in New York? Favorite brunch in New York? Um, there's a place I really like in Tribeca called Two Hands, mm -hmm. and that's a good one. Uh, it's Australian, and they have great, you know, like the avocado toast with the runny yeah. egg on it. And I think oh, Baltazar is always a good yeah. classic yeah. for brunch. That's good. Yeah, that's a great spot. And oh, my other favorite is Barbudo. Yes. So instead of getting like traditional eggs and bacon, go there and get a carbonara pasta. <laughs> oh, because so that's good. the eggs and the bacon. Oh, but yeah. Italian style in a pasta. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love Barbudo. It's really oh, good. It's so, so good, good, isn't it? It's it so always good. Is. I love anything Italian, too. Yeah. Yes. Give me pasta and I'm happy. Don't Literally you wish there was meal. just a bunch of food right here? Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is such a team. You gotta, you know, food, add to the food. I keep looking at your mug. I know. <laughs> and when you I said donut, donut, clearly it's very on brand. Yes, for me. yes, does it? Wouldn't that be nice to just bite into? So, how does that feel drinking out of it with um, the jagged edge? You know, not as bad as you think it would. Yeah. It, it's fine. It's Do you good. get any little spillage? Coming uh, I, I don't. I don't down it. It's yeah. a little, I'm, I drink like a little bit like a lady. You know, like <laughs> you can't go yeah. for a big. Gulp you can't go for a big gulp with that no. one. <laughs> But I just like the idea of it. <laughs> so before we go, I feel like we have a chef here. I always have to ask this question. Okay. What is your like guilty pleasure go-to meal? Oh, I have so many guilty pleasures. Um, you know what I really love, though, are just a really good, hot, salty french fries with a Ooh. ton of oh. ketchup. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, I want them to come straight out of the fryer and be really salty and then great amount of ketchup. Oh. So good. No truffle oil on them, no cheese, no nothing. Nothing just fancy. Fries with a lot of salt. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. So good. Palm free. <laughs> yes. Makes very me good. very happy. Well, Katie Lee, it was so great talking to you about food. You, we're yeah, starving now. Thank you yeah. so much yeah. for joining me. Thank you. Yeah. I'm hungry. Yeah. Thank you for having me.